Emert International proudly presents the Moving Job of the Year entry for the Specialized Carriers and Rigging Association. Emert International was contracted by a nuclear power generating company to transport four replacement steam generators from the port of Long Beach, California to San Onofre, California. Immediately upon being awarded the contract, Emert began the detailed planning and engineering process that ultimately took nearly three years to complete. It was a formidable challenge to transport these pressure vessels that were over 67 feet long, 23 feet 8 inches wide, and 21 feet 1 inch high, weighing 1,352,300 pounds. Emert International approached the project using a best methods transportation tactic that thoroughly investigated all possible options of transport. It started with an initial three months of detailed route studies and engineering analysis to determine the optimum approach to the many issues that the project had to overcome. The conclusion formed from these studies was that the best solution was to transport the RSGs part of the way along the beach, with the rest of the route incorporating dirt roads, a section of Interstate 5, and existing asphalt roads through a state park area, a total distance of 15 miles, of which 7 miles would be along the beach. The entire replacement project at the power plant, including the transportation, was subject to a permit issued by the California Coastal Commission. A key element in this permit was an extensive environmental impact report, the findings and recommendations of which had to be strictly followed. Most of the transport route was through areas that supported populations of endangered and federally protected species of flora and fauna. The focus was to avoid any impact. There is a period from early spring through September when no beach operations are allowed because this is an active nesting system for seabirds. This no-go period was a strong influence on the overall scheduling of the operations. Emert International worked in close cooperation with the client, federal and local environmental agencies, U.S. Marine Corps, California Department of Transportation, as well as federal and local security and law enforcement agencies to develop the detailed transportation plans for this project. Protection of the environment, including spill protection, was of paramount importance in every task. All project activity that required any personnel to be in an area that was designated as environmentally sensitive, which was basically everywhere, required the attendance of an independent biological monitor. These monitors controlled all work and movements in the designated areas to ensure full compliance with the requirements of the EIR. This even extended to the ocean transport of the RSGs on a barge from the port where the tow crew had to undergo specific training for marine mammal protection. Monitors accompanied the tow to ensure compliance. There was a necessity move of the loads along Interstate 5. This was only a short distance of about six-tenths of a mile north along the southbound carriageway, but the permitting process was long and detailed. No underroad structures were to be crossed, and pavement analysis that Emert International had to complete to ensure that the roadway remained intact under this very concentrated load were extensive and involved the use of finite element analysis software. Very extensive and detailed traffic management plans had to be drawn up and approved before Caltrans and the California Highway Patrol would issue permits for the move to proceed. Within the confines of the marine base, there were strict safety protocols to be followed at all times, as most locations are designated as active training areas where live fire activities are regularly held. Emert International crew were required to attend formal marine training sessions in order to meet the requirements of these permits by range safety officers. A fully detailed risk assessment was prepared by Emert International for the entire work scope. This was reinforced by detailed job safety assessments for each and every step of the operation, as well as daily toolbox talks for the crew. The result of this close attention to the safety aspects of the work was that throughout the entire project, Emert International had absolutely no safety issues or injuries to the crew. Not a single band-aid was required. The RSGs were fabricated in Japan and were delivered in pairs by a heavy lift ship into the port of Long Beach, California. 
here, they were offloaded by the ship's cranes and landed onto a barge provided by Emert International under the contract. The barge was then towed in the open Pacific Ocean to Del Mar Basin, which is near Oceanside, California, and within the confines of the U.S. Marine Base Camp Pendleton. Within this basin, there was an existing heavy lift dock where the RSGs were to be offloaded onto the land using RORO techniques. The first issues that Emert International had to work around were the design limitations of the RSG transport saddles and the imposed seaway loads during the ocean passage on the barge. This resulted in limitations in the allowable sea state for the voyage being imposed so as not to overstress the structures. The ZB240 barge was carefully chosen by Emert International for the operation to provide the required structural strength to withstand the imposed loads, adequate sailing stability, and a suitable ballast tank arrangement for the RORO offloading operation. The timing of the operation was very critical, as the Del Mar Basin area is tidal and the entrance is subject to quite severe rip currents at certain times. In addition, the Santa Ana winds were generally calmer in the early morning. There were no accessible lay-by berths nearby, so the voyage had to be timed to arrive at the correct time of day. This meant that the voyage was made during the night. This resulted in the loaded barge being held at the port for a few days until the tides and weather were correct. A second assist tug was a mandatory requirement to ensure the safety of the barge during the entry into the basin. The area of the basin in front of the heavy lift dock had to be dredged to specific requirements of Emert International to allow for the barge deck to be brought level with the dock apron for the offloading operation. It was not possible to dredge up to the dock face as this would have destabilized the pilings nor was it possible to dredge to a sufficient depth to allow the barge to remain in its place over a full tide cycle without bottoming. This resulted in the barge end having to be approximately 12 feet away from the dock face during offloading operations and then moved away over the low tide periods. Emert International used their modular 30-foot ramp system to bridge from the barge deck to the dock. A total of 10 feet by 6 inch diameter automatic priming ballast pumps, each delivering 2,300 gallons per minute, were used to ballast the barge during the operation in accordance with the detailed ballast plan. The RSGs were moved off the barge using a 16-axle double-wide Goldhofer PST assembled from Emert International's fleet of Goldhofer trailers. Once clear of the barge, the load was moved across Camp Pendleton using existing asphalt roads to a prepared staging area located within the base camp site. Underground services had to be protected with steel plates, and overhead cables were either lowered or shield protected for the load to pass under. Within the staging area, the RSG was offloaded onto supports using the trailer hydraulic suspension to allow the trailer to be removed and returned to the barge for the second RSG unit. The second RSG unit was offloaded in an identical manner. Once the RSGs were offloaded, the barge was deballasted and then towed from the Del Mar Basin back to the port for cleaning. The next stage in the operation was the seven-mile move along the beach, which included crossing a river estuary. For this, Emert International decided on the use of two 700-ton capacity crawler transporters, which were mounted under a steel platform onto which the RSG would be loaded. The crawlers were decided on because these tracked vehicles had the capability of travel on the soft sand without the need for matting. They were, however, only capable of a maximum speed when loaded of about 6 tenths miles per hour. All travel had to be made below the high tide line because endangered species of seabirds nested above this and the protection of their nesting habitat was mandatory. The river estuary could only be crossed at or near low tide when the water level was sufficiently low to avoid any damage to the crawler transporter's engines and or control systems. The river was also a habitat for a critically endangered fish species, and before crossing the water, it had to be rigorously checked by an expert to ensure that none of the fish were present. Any sign of the fish would have immediately resulted in the operation being aborted. This meant that it would not be possible to complete the travel along the beach in a single tide, as only a short window was available for travel.
there were three relatively small areas above the high tide line that had been identified as being clear of nesting areas. These were designated as pull-off parking areas for the load during high tide periods. Nighttime travel, although not specifically banned, was not considered by Emert International, except as a last resort due to safety concerns about working in the dark. This was not helped by imposed restrictions in the EIR on how the load could be lighted to avoid any impact on the native fauna. To load the RSG onto the crawlers, it was required to jack up the vessel from the initial set-down height of about 40 inches to a height of 114 inches. This was done using the Goldhofer trailer in a jack and pack operation. The final support arrangement had to hold the elevated RSG in a stable condition and also leave enough clear access for the crawlers to enter underneath for self-loading using a jacking system mounted in the bolsters. Once loaded onto the crawlers and securely tied down for the transport, the load was moved a short distance along an existing roadway before turning through a tight 90-degree turn onto the beach access. All prevailing environmental and weather conditions were considered, including water levels in the river to be crossed, surf conditions, wind speeds and direction, before the final approval to proceed was given. Throughout the entire move along the beach, the load was preceded by several pieces of heavy equipment, moving dozers and road graders. The crawlers had to have a path cut through the sand that was within fairly strict perimeters to ensure that any cross slopes did not compromise the stability of the operation. In parts of the route, the beach shelved steeply down to the sea, which required a considerable amount of sand to be moved to create an acceptable path. The river crossing was within one mile of the entry point onto the beach. Movement of personnel was closely controlled to be within the EIR requirements. No refueling of any equipment was allowed on the beach. Emert International had to be fully self-contained to cover all eventualities, with sufficient food and drinks for the crew, tools, spill kits, spare parts, temporary lights, and the mandatory porta potty the seven-mile beach transit took three days to complete given the tidal requirements and the locations of the approved parking spots. Throughout this entire period, Emert International had to maintain a 24-hour watch and marine safety cover on the load. The exit from the beach was up onto an elevated area using a temporary dirt road. This road was prepared by Emert International and required the load to climb a 10% grade. Once on the elevated area, the RSG was offloaded and then jacked down using the Goldhofer trailer following a reverse of the loading operation. The crawlers returned back to the marine base to load the next RSG. This required them to drive back down the beach following exactly the same protocols and procedures imposed for the loaded move. Meanwhile, the RSG was loaded onto the Goldhoffers and moved off the elevated area along improved dirt roads to a position where it was required to pass onto Interstate 5 for a move north along the southbound carriageway for a distance of about five-tenths of a mile. This was required because a large eroded canyon blocked the path. The canyon ran up to the interstate boundary fence line. The move was done exactly on schedule during a nighttime part closure of the freeway. Excluding the final preparatory work and the clearing up of the steel plates and matting afterwards, the actual movement along the freeway took less than 30 minutes to achieve. With the freeway move completed, the RSG was moved along an existing dirt road to join an asphalt road that was formerly the old highway up to the boundary fence to a local state park. This area was again subject to close environmental scrutiny as the coastal sage scrub that grew here was the favored habitat of endangered species. The dirt road areas had vernal pools that were the habitat for various species of fairy shrimp, another endangered species, and had to be avoided. The asphalt road areas had to be protected in many areas due to underground utilities, culverts, and weak pavement sections. This required Emert International to lay down about 320 foot by 8 foot steel plates in total. One large shallow culvert had to be internally braced and blocked out in order for the load to cross. Once at the state park entrance, clearances were very restricted and close to zero clearance in some areas. Emmert crews had to pay close attention to maintain clearance as not to cause any damage to the state park. Protected trees had to be trimmed back within the state park to prepare a suitable route for the load to pass. 
Once clear of the state park, a one-mile move along a frontage road, again with some underground services having to be protected, had the load entering the power plant reservation through a car parking area. A specially built road built to Emmert's precise specifications for this project was used to exit the car park and descend down a 6% grade onto the power plant's main entry road. The route then used existing plant roads to the required delivery point in the designated storage area. This route, though, involved the plating of underground service areas and the protection of weak pavement areas, again using steel plate. There was a requirement for Emmert International to move the load between some existing buildings and a steep embankment along a curved road. This area was the subject of detailed surveys during the planning stage of the project, and Emmert International determined that the move was feasible providing the RSG transport saddles could be reduced in width. This was achieved by making the saddle ends removable. The load passed safely through this pinch point with the predicted minimal clearance of one quarter inch on both sides. In common with all operations inside active nuclear facilities, security of the load was very tight. Emmert International had to work within a strict cordon of security for this phase of the operation. Once within the storage area, the saddle extensions were reattached and the RSG lowered onto supports using the trailer suspension system. The trailers were then returned to the elevated areas and the transport operation was repeated for the second RSG, following all the same operational criteria and protocols. Overall dimensions, length 110 feet 3 inches, width 26 feet 2 inches, height 33 feet 8 inches. Total gross weight as moved 1,944,800 pounds. Planning the job. Planning and permitting process was over a three-year period. 3,900 hours of engineering. 4,800 hours of planning and coordination. Permits and approvals. California Coastal Commission. Environmental Protection Agency. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Fish and Wildlife. California DOT. U.S. Marine Corps over 100 different local and federal environmental agencies, physical elements encountered, ocean tide restrictions, soft sand, beach landing, restricted land areas of endangered and protected plants and wildlife, night moves, tight clearances, steep grades, travel restrictions, interstate closures, weak pavement sections, underground and overhead services, river crossing containing protected fish, safety considerations, ground conditions, detailed risk assessment, detailed job safety assessment, daily toolbox talks, security personnel, radio communication between equipment operators and site personnel, equipment used within tolerances, personal safety equipment required at all times, all safety policies were in effect at all times. Execution, 19,873 man hours on the job. Ingenuity and innovations, removable saddle extensions, extensive beach work to make the move possible, three modes of transportation, modification of existing equipment, outrigger dollies, barge stability stands, loss prevention, no accidents, no injuries, no incidents, no property damage, no loss of time, no structural damage, no cargo damage, no equipment damage. Emmert International strives to have the highest quality in safety, professionalism, engineering, logistics, and craftsmanship. All operations were safely performed under the care, custody, and control of Emmert International.